All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, coming at it with another daily upload. It's actually pretty crazy I've been able to keep a schedule that long, huh? So um, today, obviously, as you can see, we're moving on to Melancholy. Now, I didn't skip Pisces. Like I was saying, the next one going to be Melancholy, because guess what? There's nothing in between Pisces and Melancholy. Now, as I was also saying, this is definitely going to be a two-parter because this is a double length album you know the massive sprawling concept album 28 songs it's huge it's actually getting a sequel here if you follow the smashing pumpkins they just uh announced one of their songs like a couple days ago it's actually not bad um but yeah today we're going to be talking about melancholy part one so in this, we're going to be talking about Disc 1, which is Dawn to Dusk, and um, a little little background coming off of Siamese Dream. Uh, Billy Corgan wanted to make a massive double concept album, which was a trend that kept happening over and over again <laughs> with, a, with a door with Machina. Machina, obviously, if you're unaware, was supposed to be a massive double album as well, hence why we have Machina 2 and whatnot. But, uh, that's besides the point. Just a little background on this. Came out in 1995. Um, talk about it a bit. In the vein of Smashing Pumpkins, this album is very varied. I, I would say to anybody who's looking to get into Smashing Pumpkins, even though this album is very long, <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm talking very long, this is probably the best album to listen to, honestly. Because... It's got the most variation, it's got the most songs. Arguably, this is what a lot of people would rank the best album that they put out. Arguably, a lot of people say one of the best albums of the 90s. It won, like, Grammys and stuff like that, if I remember correctly. Wasn't alive, just, you know, secondhand. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's literally got... I, I feel like this album really does have everything that makes the Smashing Pumpkins the smashing pumpkins a lot of variation a lot of mellow songs a lot of heavy songs a lot of songs that are just got that kind of pumpkins feel you know it really is i would say this is the best indicator of what the smashing pumpkins are <laughs> as, a, as a whole band too because unlike siamese which is like you know touted to be like the perfection album right where like billy corgan read it all guitar parts and bass parts and he worked with butch vig to just do that right this album was a lot more of a band because it's produced by flood which uh who's the one who uh produced the next couple albums up to machina which arguably i think i like him as a producer a little more than butch vig no offense to him i just like honestly as a, as a collection in a tone you know, of sound, I I think Melancholy, Adore, and Machina, in my opinion, are just uh, kind of like more more of a cohesive sound to the downfall of the Pumpkins, believe it or not, because, you know, Melancholy to Adore to Machina is like literally like the supposed downfall of the pumpkins when the band was breaking up and whatnot but you know that's besides the point obviously all these albums are incredible they're perfect in their own ways and yada yada so in an effort to not drone on about this forever i will start with with cd1 which is dawn to dusk so some tracks that uh, i think are just better or perfect or yada yada it's actually very hard to choose off this record because a lot of these songs are really great in their own ways and that's kind of why this record's great is a lot of them aren't very similar at all to each other yet they're all just that good but um i guess we'll start with the intro melancholy and the infinite sadness it's a piano piece one of the few piano pieces i tried to learn how to play you know just noodling around on a piano because it's it's it really is a perfect start to this whole rock opera idea or whatever billy billy corgan had on this it's pretty pretty uh 
pretty beautiful. And then we go straight into Tonight Tonight, which, you know, I mean, is, is a classic, and everybody can agree with that. It's just got this beautiful, like, string kind of mellow, but also, like, operatic sound. It's, that's like this whole album. This whole album is just full of crazy good songs that are just super unique and inventive like that and then <laughs> i could really this one this one is tough because i had to control myself on, on pisces which was a little easier because i don't listen to pisces all the way through very often but i have very fond memories of melancholy because i listen to this album all the time and every song uh, i just remember from years ago or whatever just listening to it all the way through over and over again think about that like a two-hour album <laughs> just listening to it all the way through over and over again so i'm gonna try and keep this brief and skip around a bit but it's it's definitely a bit tough a bit tougher for me because i could realistically do what i did on siamese dream and just go through all of these uh then we'll go to zero which if you know anything about the whole lore is is about the whole like supposed main character zero of this whole concept album or whatnot which is if we're all being honest here kind of just a billy corgan stand in and i think it's pretty obvious i mean i think he's made that pretty clear but zero is i mean a great song it's like one of their harder heavy rock songs and it's basically the beginning of <laughs> what is what is almost now the entire smashing pumpkins identity which is which is the whole zero idea then we have bullet with butterfly wings i mean obviously i don't do i have to say much more if you're familiar with this magic that means you're familiar with this song do i have to say much more than that uh then we have to forgive after bullet with butterfly wings which to forgive is 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 worth noting because it's very sad <laughs> i think that's the best way to put it it's probably maybe besides one or two other songs that come close the saddest one of the saddest songs that he has ever written i think um that's that's probably the best way to put it it's very powerful very emotional what can i say uh, and then we go into galapagos which is like from my vi from my view is like a love song and it's probably one of my favorite songs off this album consistently i mean i love all the guitar in it all the guitar parts the kind of pacing of it it's a bit of a longer song like i said i think it's about like kind of like a love song or something it's just a like an incredible song and then we'll go we'll go th <laughs> through these last three because i can't contain myself we'll go through these last three kind of rapid fire so muzzle i mean what can i say it's it's just one of those songs it's like it's a, a rare smashing pumpkin song that's like uplifting almost <laughs> not like it's rare but usually the whole idea of the pumpkins is like that they're sad or like angry or whatever right it's this one's it's like an uplifting rock song it's very very good um porcelain of the vash oceans it's a very this song feels very siamese dream pisces is scary a gish ish it's a very long jammy kind of song you know what i mean great song i mean and it's a perfect segue into what would be the end of the night or whatever the idea was to take me down which is sung by james iha very very rare that something like that happens even though james iha has like solo work and whatnot for the pumpkins itself i think this is one of the only songs he just sings entirely in their entire catalog, if not the only one. And it's a really good song to end the album. It's very slow, very mellow. Just a cool guitar riff going on. And it's like, just makes you feel good for the end of this first part of the album. And I really think that's kind of like the entire thing with this album is it's it's got its ups, it's got its downs even if you don't understand the full story, you know what I mean? It's it's just, it makes you feel some type of way at the end of both CDs, right? And uh, I think even if you don't know what's going on with the story or whatnot, it achieves 
that. <laughs> and that's why I think this album was so famous outside of its singles is when people looked past the singles and bought the actual album. It's just one of those albums that's just perfect, like all the way through. Even one of the songs we'll talk about later that I wasn't really a fan of like probably the only song on this album that I wasn't a fan of for quite a while actually was Tales of a Scorched Earth because I just thought it was too noisy, too much going on. And then I, you know, going back, I'm like, dang, the song is actually pretty good. So now I truly feel, <laughs> after all this time, I thought it was a perfect album before, I, I truly feel now that I genuinely can appreciate every song on this album for what it is and why it's it makes the Smashing Pumpkins who they are and why I think so many people love them and still love them to this day and why I love them. So with with that, in summary, first album is a 10, a collective 10. Wait for the second 10, like I was saying in the Pisces video. But uh, yeah, the first album's obviously a 10. This album is incredible. Can't wait to talk about all these albums, you know? And um, with that, I guess... Uh, that's probably where we're going to be ending the part one of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll try and get consistent with saying that because that's what every YouTuber does. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.